Cause I'm a laid back fellow It's two reviews for the price of one time. The first is Diecast Masters 85684, which is the 1 to 50 Caterpillar 980 wheel loader. And just for good measure, on top of that, we have 85685, which is the Caterpillar 982XE. They come in outer shipping cartons, and we start with the 980, which weighs in at £2.8, ounces, which is 1.14 kilograms. Let's compare the 982XE and it's slightly heavier at 1.185 kilograms. The boxes contain tins in nylon bags and surely this time we'll open at least one of the boxes with the opening in the nylon bag at the right end. Here's the 980 and yes, we've done it. Okay, fair enough. I'm not expecting the 982XE to be opened at the right end. So why change the habit of a lifetime when you can open it at the wrong end and, yep, yeah, it's the wrong end. Anyway, back to the 980 and let's pull out the tin that's inside. As usual for a Diecast Masters Highline series model, the tin is high quality. It has a great photo of the real machine on the lid and there's a photo of the model on the side. And if we turn it around, there's technical information about the real machine. We will look at that a little bit more in a moment, but first let's take the lid off and try and get the model out. First up, all we have is a large piece of black foam rubber, and after some manhandling, we managed to pull it out. There is the 980 sitting in the bottom of the tin, and as we get it out, there's no assembly to do because it is complete out of the tin. Comparing the data for the machines side by side, you can see that the 982 is about 15% heavier and it can have a larger bucket size. And here are the two models out of their tins. Let's check the weight of the models and first it's the 980 at one pounds two ounces and that turns in at 505 grams. So we should see that the 982 model is heavier and at 15% heavier it should be about 580 grams. On the way bridge, it is heavier at 550 grams. For the detail, we'll look at the models side by side. And looking underneath, the obvious difference is in the counterweights. The 982 at the top has a much bigger counterweight than the 980. Everything else on the models seems the same, and that includes the tyres, which have a nice tread pattern. Detail around the pivot point is the same, and looking at the front axle, the differential is modelled, but the drive shaft is incomplete. The other difference visible here is the buckets, and we'll look at them more in a moment. Here is the rear end of both models, and again you can see that there is an obvious difference in the counterweights. But the rear grills are the same, they have lights at the top, and there's a CAT logo. The black area on top of the engine is also the same, and it's nicely detailed with rivet heads showing, and there are small graphics also. However, there is another area of difference visible from this view, and that concerns the wheel arches. And you can see the 980 only has a partial wheel arch, and the 982 has a full wheel arch. You can see this clearly from a side-on view also, but the side engine panels are the same. There are small warning notices, and the grills are formed of graphics. Another difference is of course the 982 versus 980 model number, and both models benefit from metal handrails. The wheels also have highlighted bolt head details. The cabs are both the same, and they include an operator that's not removable, and the mirror assemblies are plastic. The windscreen wipers are a touch large for the scale, the roof panels have patterns in the casting, and the grab rails around the edge of the cab are plastic. Details at the pivot point are identical, and that includes some tiny graphics, and there are no hydraulic hoses crossing the pivot point. There's a textured platform outside of the cab, and the access ladder also has some textured steps. 
The loader arm mechanism is the same on both machines. There are no hydraulic hoses running to the rams, but the connection rivets are reasonably discreet as they're painted yellow. There are lights mounted on plastic stalks. And there is another difference visible at the front and that concerns the wheel arches. And on the 982 they are of a different design. Lastly we come to the buckets and here we see quite a difference. The 980 has a toothed bucket with nicely modelled teeth. And the 982 has a larger bucket with a cut edge. <laughs> In terms of functionality, the models are the same and all the wheels spin freely. The rear axles have a very large range of movement and if anything, they're a little bit too loose. The steering of these machines is by hydraulic rams across the pivot point and a moderate angle can be achieved. Let's move straight out onto the Cranes Etc test track and the models do whiz along in a straight line very easily. If we set the steering, we can get a moderate curve and the model rolls well enough. The other check we can do is on the floating rear axle. And as you can see, there's a huge range of movement. Moving straight on to the bucket functions and the hydraulic rams on these models are quite stiff. You can raise the buckets to a decent height. And at the top, the bucket can be used for carrying or tipping. And the tipping angle that you can achieve is very good. Let's get back down to earth. And it is possible to achieve a reasonable cut angle on the bucket. But these wheel loaders are also engineered well because you can pose the bucket with a proper carry angle. So you can pose the model to have a realistic pose. On now to the genuine imitation real life tests. And both models can easily get high enough to tip into an American dump truck. Because I'm a laid back fellow. This is another pair of well presented wheel loader models from Diecast Masters. The real machines are closely related, and it's good that Diecast Masters have reflected the differences in the models. And that's much better than just giving them different badge numbers. They are robustly made with some nice detailing and functionality, and overall they're rated as very good. Hello. 